It's time now for Countywide, a special presentation of Yavapai Broadcasting News. Join Paul David and Kyle Benedict as they talk with our community's leaders, newsmakers, and people in the know. You'll hear about the hot topics that affect all our lives in Yavapai County. And now here's today's Countywide. Welcome to Countywide. I'm Paul David. Once again, great to have you in studio with us today. We're going to get a checkup on the Coconino National Forest. Last week we spoke with uh, uh, Prescott National Forest and received an update there. And uh, today, again, like I said, Coconino National Forest, uh, Deputy Fire Staff Officer Dwayne Tewa in studio. Welcome to studio. Thanks Your for having first me. first time here. Uh, very, my first, very first time, yes. Well, hopefully it goes very smoothly <laughs> for you. We will see. Anyways, uh, firerestrictions.us. That is a website you need to know right now. Tonto National Forest is going to be going into restrictions. Uh, we were talking just a second ago. Tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. Friday, that'll be June 5th at 8 a.m. They go into fire restrictions. Are they the first one? Yes. In the state to yes. go into it? Yes, they are. That seems a little unusual. Usually southern Arizona kind of jumps in and then it kind of follows a pursuit. Correct. But Correct. Not um, the case this year. Not the case this year. You know, typically it, it starts in the desert and Coronado and, and the Tano are usually the first to go along with the Prescott since they're kind of in that same fuel type. Uh, but this year I think they've had some, some issues with shooting primarily and um, the conditions down there as they start reaching the triple digits, that kind of spurs them into start thinking that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was talking to Carrie Templin, their, their PIO there yesterday, and she said that they have had issues with the target practice, that that is going to be shut down now. Uh, unless, of course, you have a hunting tag, then you could still go on the Tonto National Forest and do your hunt, but they are going to shut that down. They've had something like, uh, I think she said, 30 wildfires so far this year. That's correct all relatively small in size, but nevertheless, all human caused, which is what we're still trying to get to stop is that human factor. So firerestrictions.us <coughs> is gonna be an important website for the next uh, several weeks. So we know who is on fire restrictions, who's not on fire restrictions. In terms of burning in your backyard or around your property, uh, that is something you need to call your local fire agency on and find out about. So let's get right into it with Dwayne here. Um, we have had March and April kind of got warm, and Correct. I thought for sure we were in store for a, a typical wildfire season, so we had you guys in earlier this year to talk about this stuff. And then all of a sudden May hit, and it turned into this wet spring. What has it meant for the Coconino National Forest to have the month of May happen? It's night and day between last year at the same time. Uh, it's been pretty good as far as you know activity goes. Uh, we've had a lot of visitors to the forest. Uh, and for fire activity, it's been very minimal. So for us, you know, we, we're fully staffed, everyone's on, uh, all of our hotshot crews are available. Um, so we're ready in the event. It's just that the storms have, have given us a little bit of a reprieve this year from, as compared to last year. Now I've noticed over the last few weeks, the grasses have gone from being just these, I mean, the brown ones were there, relatively tall, but now the green ones have definitely shot up as well. So as terms of wet in the forest, how are the conditions of the, the fuels? Let's talk about the fuels a little bit. The fuels this year are uh, a lot more moist uh, as compared to last year. Last year we were at critical levels. Uh, this year we're setting records for lows uh, as far as fuel moistures go. So from that standpoint, you know, we're sitting pretty good, although there is still a dead component out on the forest floor that people need to be aware of. What is that uh, dead component? The dead component is last year's needle cast, last year's grasses from last year's monsoons. We had a little bit of a dry fall last year, so that carried over into the spring. So a lot of the stuff that happened in the spring as far as the snow that we got matted those, those grasses down. So those are kind of underneath that new growth that's coming up. So when I look out over the forest and I see this two foot tall green grass, foot two feet tall green grass, it does, we talked about a, a, a false sense of security. Correct. That, that the forest is green, it's beautiful, it's lush, you know, I could throw a match anywhere I wanted to and the thing's not going to burn. But that's not the case. That's not the case. You know, we've, we've, uh, those grasses will cure in time and as long as we get warm temperatures and drier conditions, they will cure out. So within the next few weeks, you know, we should be seeing those two foot grasses start to turn from green to brown and then we'll start getting uh, more activity and, and the more susceptible uh, to ignitions those fuels will be. Let's talk about the, uh, the one hour fuels. Is it 10 hours? One hours, 10 hours, 100 uh -huh. hours and 1000 hours. Okay, how are those doing? The one hours are the ones that we monitor on a daily basis. Those ones have the quickest turnaround as far as the grasses and the needle cast. Uh, the thousand hours are what we usually track for longevity of a season, the intensity of a fire, uh, the susceptibility of the fuels. Uh, it takes 
uh, a lot longer. The, the longer those fuels are dry, the more susceptible they will be to any kind of an ember uh, ignition. That ignition, they're, they're a big ignition source, basically, uh, and they will drive the intensity of a, of a wildfire. Those are those thousand ones. And we've talked about those on the shows before. Those are those big logs that you see in the forest that I think last year, it was last year, I don't <coughs> think it was, it was last year because we talked about it several times, the slide fire, those thousand hour fuels were burned into white ash on the ground. Correct. Until there's nothing left. Correct. And so how are, how are they looking this year? Is it, would it be, are they gonna be intense? If no, they catch I, I, fire? You know, we're, we're, we're hovering around the mid-teens for 1,000 hours at this time. This time last year, I think we were below 9% uh, in our 1,000 hour fuse, which is extremely low, mm -hmm. critical levels. So this year we're looking a lot better. Uh, the the 1,000 hours are, are have retained much more moisture this year than they were last year. Okay, all right. I think something we should bring up though is, um, you know, Memorial Day weekend, we had, um, it, was, it was a wet, cool, cold weekend. San Francisco Peaks had clouds, Mingus had clouds over it. I know it rained in several locations. There was some slushy snow coming down. And um, we had a lot of abandoned campfires. We'll come back to the abandoned campfires. We'll talk about those. But there were a lot of abandoned campfires in the Coconino National Forest. And, and I could see where people coming up to the Cocoa Forest to, to recreate and to camp would think, oh, wow, look at this weather. It's, it's cloudy, there's a lot of humidity, it's raining, it's snowing. But you guys had a fire. Correct, we had a fire on state land just north of town, uh, just across the, the forest boundary. Uh, again, it goes back to that dead component and carryover fuels from last year uh, was in the, in the grass. And so those, those fuels are still susceptible to burn, regardless of whether or not you know, we have a little bit of moisture here and there. Uh, that, that carryover dead component from last year is still gonna be uh, available for an ignition source. We have to be careful. Correct. All the time. I mean, we had, we've had wildfires in the winter time. Yes, yes, we had, we were pretty busy over Thanksgiving last year. You know, mm. we had a fairly dry fall. That's right. So we had we had several large wildfires that that kicked off right around the holidays, and uh, kept us busy. I mean, there's time for us to we can be I guess a little lax, but for the most time, most part, we have to always be thinking about what we're doing in terms of our campfires and, and, and things like that out there. Yeah, there's a responsibility that goes along with having a campfire or even putting any kind of fire on the ground in the forest. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just maintain some vigilance and, and some common sense is, is kind of a, a good way to think about it. Yeah. We've been telling folks that, you know, you you should have a shovel, a shovel with you when you go camping. You should have a rake when you go camping. Uh, you should have, I think we take at least five gallons of water, my wife and I will take five gallons of water. And then you got to pour the dirt and the water on the, on the campfire when you're done. Stir it, feel it if it's hot. Do all that again and just keep doing that until you can touch it. Correct. It's not burning your hand, and then we don't have to worry about it anymore. Um, maybe, it's, maybe it's the old Westerns. See, even in the old Westerns, you know, the, the cowboy would get up and he'd kick that dirt over that little bit of fire and off he'd go. I don't think we have some of that going on out yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, I think that's kind of <laughs> where we're, we're getting a lot of those abandoned campfires. This yeah. is kind of the old school way of doing things. Well, let's take our first break. We'll come back. We'll talk about the abandoned campfires and, and kind of the hazards they're, they're providing for us out there on the Coconino National Forest. Uh, fire Staff Officer, Deputy Fire Staff Officer Dwayne Tewa from the Coconino National Forest in studio today. FireRestrictions.us. Keep that handy so you can check on fire restrictions before you head out to the great outdoors. This is County Wide back in just a couple minutes. How can I help my daughter with her reading? Searching for help with Dachshund Reading. How can I help my daughter with her reading? Information on hot water heating. Uh, no. Sarah's bright, but when she's reading, she has trouble sounding out the words. World music playing track now. No. Let me try. Our daughter gets confused about which details in a story are important. Which paper towels are most absorbent? What? Here are five product reviews. Why are you not getting me? See, I told you. Wait, I was trying to show you how Sarah feels every day. Frustrating, isn't it? Redirecting to understood.org. For the one in five kids with learning and attention issues, this is what life can feel like. Explore understood.org, a free online resource about learning and attention issues designed to help your child thrive in school and in life. Understood.org, because understanding is everything. Dear. 
Visit aarp.org slash caregiving for information on how to provide even better care for the person who wants to care of you. Don't let E. coli mosh with your food. An estimated 3,000 Americans die from a foodborne illness each year. You can't see these microbes, but they might be there. So always separate raw meat from vegetables. Keep your family safe at foodsafety.gov. Welcome back to Countywide. I'm Paul David. Great to have you in the studio with us today. We're back with Coconino National Forest Deputy Fire Staff Officer Dwayne Tiwa. Uh, we've kind of talked about current conditions in the Coconino National Forest. What is the uh, current fire danger there? Moderate. It's moderate. Okay. Okay. So, uh, but we, we have had warmer temperatures now over the last, I guess, just a week, and we've got more storms coming in, which is going to drop temperatures back down again. But we have had those 30, 35 mile an hour winds that are pretty much doggone steady Correct. throughout the week. So that is drying things out Correct. quickly. But hopefully this storm moving in will kind of wetten those up again. Um, abandoned campfires. Prior to Memorial Day weekend, uh, I email Brady Smith and Debbie Manili each Monday morning. And I say, how many abandoned campfires did you have? And I think I was getting uh, like sixes from Brady and I was getting two or threes from, from Debbie. But Memorial Day weekend hit and it completely changed. When that <coughs> weekend was over, Brady told me a little over 60, and then Debbie Manili was talking about 12 on the Prescott National Forest. Correct. Memorial Day weekend. Last weekend, there were 31 on the Coconino National Forest, and there was 13 on the Prescott National Forest. What are we going to do about that? That is a trend that we've been monitoring very closely, especially after the Memorial Day weekend, and it, it, it was very eye-opening to us. Uh, and, and I think it goes back to that false sense of security that mm -hmm. people see a lot of green out there and don't really take the time to put out their campfires. So from that standpoint, you know, we're, we've been talking about bringing in extra patrols to help with that and, and really start pushing the public education uh, on campfires. Uh, we're not in restrictions. Uh, so I think there's there's another reason people want to come up and, and recreate and have a good time. And uh, I just think that, uh, you know, folks, uh, again, have a false sense of security because everything is green. Now, let me ask you this. Uh, what kind of a thought comes into your head when you hear the Tonto National Forest is in restrictions? And like you said, people like to have a campfire. I mean, when you're going camping, it's kind of part of the whole thing. Correct. So do you, do you guys see an influx of people when, when you see the, the lower forests in the lower part of the state start to, to shut down with, in terms of restrictions, not closures, but restrictions? Do you start to see them move more, more northerly? Absolutely. Uh -huh. yeah, I think we're going to see that that influx of folks over the next few weekends all the way up to our next holiday, which is July 4th. So I, I see us having an increase in, in visitor use, which means that, again, we may be running into the same problem of having more abandoned campfires. So, so from that standpoint, we are looking at uh, submitting a, a request for uh, support and getting us some more uh, patrols and fire prevention folks uh, so that we can really start beefing up our education efforts uh, on that front. You have a volunteer group that goes out and kind of patrols the forest roads too. Correct. We do have some some volunteers that go out and, and help us on that. Okay. All right. With that said, Forest Road 237. It's mm -hmm. right there at the top of the switchbacks in Oak Creek Canyon. I was talking to uh, Paul Podorowski mm -hmm. up there at the Coconino National Forest, and he was telling they had a meeting. You guys had a meeting last night. But anyways, we got off track on, on what we were actually talking about, and he was telling me about Forest Road 237 and how you guys have done a project, kind of a test project back there. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, it's, it was a, a kind of a recreation initiative where there has been some issues in the past with uh, dispersed camping. And with it being so close to Kachina Village and that community there, uh, there's always the threat of uh, potential wildfire. So from that standpoint, you know, we looked at trying to come up with ways to uh, try to concentrate more of those camping areas. and. Uh, the feedback that we've gotten from our fire prevention patrols is that it's it's been pretty successful so far. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was telling me that uh, back on Forest Road 237, I guess that the trend is as people come up, visitors come up they, through Oak Creek Canyon, they see campground full, 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 full. They wind up on top of the rim, and 237, I guess, is one of the first roads they run into. Correct. Yeah, so I guess you guys have done like 75 campfire rings out there with little pullouts, and people are using them, and they like them. Yes. I like the, the, the convenience of that. 
Yes, yes, and uh, a, a big part of that too was the uh, the trash too. That was, that was another part of it. Uh, but it, but it helps our fire prevention patrols kind of concentrate and and really hit a, a larger audience for education purposes. Uh, so that that has been a benefit. Hey, Dwayne, how many garbage trucks do you have go down Road Forest Road 237 Zero right after the weekend? How many? <laughs> Zero right Zero, now. Zero, right? So, yeah. Oh, boy, maybe we should think about that. Because I understand people are actually, and this is not new. We've we talked about this before, but people are bagging their trash, which is nice of them, and they're setting it at the edge of the forest road as they leave camp. How do we how do we get that message out that uh, you can't really do that? You know, we're still going to preach the pack it in, pack it out. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, everyone's responsible for their own, much like we expect people to be responsible for their campfires, we expect people to be responsible for, for their garbage that they bring into the forest. It's an awful lot of information for us to try to put out every Friday and Saturday for you guys, it but is. We're, we're doing it. We're, we're talking about know before you go. That's the whole uh, firerestrictions.us, know before you go, so you don't get out there and you build a campfire and then one of your folks comes along and says, you can't have a campfire right now and you get a ticket. Um, <coughs> speaking of, of tickets, um, do you have uh, you've obviously have you do have some forest patrols going out correct on the weekends okay or I guess weekdays too yeah I mean we got people camping you know taking vacations and stuff when you guys write those license plate numbers down at a campsite and and then you go back and find an abandoned campfire is do you go back and and try to make contact with those folks yeah more often than not you know our folks will be making their rounds and they'll, they will take down some information um, and then then they'll they'll go and, and try to do education first obviously and mm -hmm. then compliance and then if if need be if we got somebody that's you know a little resistant to to the the warnings then yes we will we will issue them a a citation okay all right how many wildfires have you guys had this year on the we've had ago? about 40 or 50 so far 40 or 50 yeah and just, just very small. Very just minor. very small. And what, what do you consider small? Uh, anything less than an acre. Okay. So are, are these abandoned campfire driven? Most of them have been human caused so far okay. this year. All right, we so. have had a couple lightning though, which has been surprising. Oh really? Yes. Okay, tell me yes. about the lightning ones because that's going to be a concern starting Thursday night through uh, next Wednesday. We've got a chance of showers and thunderstorms with a heavy emphasis on Thursday night through Friday. So. We're going to be talking about some lightning. Correct. We haven't had very many, though. We had uh, a storm that came through at the 1st of May, and it was out in the cinders, uh, kind of out on that northeast part of the forest. Uh, a couple lightning strikes hit a tree and um, wasn't very difficult to deal with. But, uh, yeah, that is an expectation that we're going to start getting into that, t that time of year where we're going to expect more, more lightning and, and more activity on that side of the house. So. Okay, and last time when Brady was here and Vic was here, we found out that the, all the towers, the lookout towers, have been staffed. Correct. And manned. But... Um, eyes all over the forest would be good. I mean, it, we are going to have these storms roll through, and sometimes we do have that dry lightning thing happen where you have this great big storm happening and no rain comes out of it, but the lightning sure as heck does. So extra eyes maybe. If I see something and I'm out in the middle of the forest and I see lightning coming down and all of a sudden after the storm passes and I can see smoke coming up. Absolutely. Absolutely. What should I do? You know, call, call our dispatch center. Uh, I believe this, the, the number's on our, on our website. Uh, is to report a wildfire, and uh, we'll get folks out there uh, taking a look. But uh, the other thing we wanted to make sure that, that we, with the conditions being the way that they are and, and very, very advantageous to us, there's a window of opportunity to do quite a bit of prescribed burning and, and, and take care of some of that hazardous fuel reduction. Uh, so we have been active this spring in kind of maintaining that, uh, that, those activities. So the public can expect that as long as those windows of opportunity are there, that uh, the smoke that they might see, we're going to continue those activities and it's probably going to be us. Okay. All right. Let's take a quick break. We come back, we'll talk about that because you're burning right down your A1 mountains. So let's do that. Uh, FireRestrictions.us. Remember, know before you go when you head out in the forest. This is Countywide. We'll be back in just a couple minutes. You're doing great. Let's just, we're going to try this again, okay? Okay. Wheels, pedals, handlebar, brakes. Sit up straight, keep your weight in the center, keep your eyes on the road, hands on the grips, button to see. If we feel ourselves falling, what do we do? Just, just keep, keep pedaling. pedaling. Good girl. Now remember, it's all about balance and steering. Steer with your hands, steer with your body. Steer into the corners and you stay out of trouble. And the bell's your buddy, so go ahead and ding that. All right, you ready? Here we go. Pedal, honey, pedal. There you go, you're a bike rider. Most parenting is hard to do in just two minutes. But two minutes twice a day making sure they brush is easier. And it could help save them from a lifetime of tooth pain. The inherent right to work is one of the elemental privileges of a free people. Endowed, as our nation is, with abundant physical resources, 
and inspired as it should be to make those resources and opportunities available for the enjoyment of all, we approach re-employment with the real hope of finding a better answer than we have now. Donate to Goodwill, where your donations help fund job placement and training for people in your community. This new dad is picturing a tree house in the sky, but he's ignoring the instructions. Good luck, big guy. His kids know that he's building without a clue. Never been so good with nails and glue. Now we're trapped inside a box. I hope mom knows what to do. Mom! Mom! See, you don't have to be perfect to be the perfect parent. Thousands of siblings in foster care will take you just as you are. They told me a bottle couldn't dream. That I would never become a superhero. But I learned how to fly. Just to come back in a new disguise. And be the hero that I've always wanted to be. Back to County Y. We've got just a couple minutes left in the program. Duane Tewa from the Coconino National Forest, he's their deputy fire staff officer, is in studio today. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but driving around the Verde Valley and up north, it's really nice to look out over the horizon and not see it choked full of smoke. Uh, we have had some smoke. Uh, like you said, you guys are doing some prescribed burning. You have been uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, again today, 200 acres up by A1 Mountain, just uh, west of Flagstaff. And you were mentioning just before the break that you have these windows of opportunity still, which is really unusual to yes. have this time of year. Yes, this time of year we're usually in some form of restriction. Uh, so that really limits our opportunity for putting fire back on the landscape uh, and, and start those restoration efforts. Uh, but this year, with the conditions that, the way that they are, it's prime time to, to really start you know, getting back into those, uh, what we would consider in-season burning uh, windows mm -hmm. and, and start trying to take care of those hazardous fuels under what would be the historical conditions. With the Coconino National Forest, what area of the Coconino National Forest is probably the driest section? Is, is that even a question you could answer? That's difficult to pinpoint, right. uh, but I would say that, that from the standpoint of, of being more readily available for ignitions, I would say everything below the rim, the Birdie Valley, those areas are gonna be a little bit more susceptible mm -hmm. because they're gonna be, uh, you know, they get the higher temperatures and once they start getting those higher temperatures, they're gonna be uh, drying out a lot faster than we will above the rim. Okay, that makes total sense, right up 260 to 87. Correct. Right along that route right yep. there. Because that's, is that where the Coconino and Tonto kind of collide? Yes. Right along 260 yep. and 87 there? Okay, all right. Well, um, anything else we want to make sure we get out to folks? Again, uh, firerestrictions.us is the know before you go website to, to check on. Uh, Tonto National Forest is going into restrictions Friday morning, June 5th at 8 a.m. No restrictions right now on the Coconino National Forest. And Dwayne, you said that you guys are at moderate fire danger right now. Moderate fire danger, and we'll be looking at, uh, you know, maintaining that until conditions change, mm -hmm. and uh, we're just going to continue to to. And those monitor. could change rapidly. Yeah, they could. Conditions they could. really yes. could change quite rapidly. We haven't had a very windy spring, but the winds definitely were here this week. Correct. And so if we continue to see that, I don't know how we're getting June rainstorms and thunderstorms, but it's happening. So We'll take it. Yeah, we will take it most definitely. All right. Uh, I think that's all I got. Anything else you wanted to get out there? No, we're just going to be looking at beefing up some patrols uh, during the weekends and uh, kind of start expecting... Uh, but expect to see more more folks, more more fire prevention patrols out in the woods. Okay, all right. Put your campfire out and take your trash with you. Absolutely. Simple as that. Dwayne, great right. to meet you. Thank you. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for having us. That's today's Countywide. I'm Paul David. We'll talk to you again next time.